Before Christmas, a constituent reached out to me to tell me about his mother. She'd recently died, and when dealing with her affairs, he was distraught to discover that she died with no money in the bank and with unpaid bills stacking up. She'd worked hard, paid into the system and raised her family, and what she was left with wasn't enough. And of course, there's nothing that I could do for his mother, though he was obviously extremely distraught to think that she was experiencing that anxiety in the latter days of her life. But he did want me to be aware of knowing the cost pressures that pensioners face and to do what I could to stop older people ending up in the same position. And we know that she is far from the only pensioner living in poverty, of making those choices between heating and eating. Now, that sounds like a cliché, but I am the co-chair of the APPG for Ending the Need for Food Banks, and we hear that in our inquiry sessions of going without. People don't have patience or time to wait for the Chancellor's statement. And for many, this government's recent actions is what has pushed them over the edge. The real terms cut to the state pension by abandoning the triple lock and the failure to respond to the cost of living crisis. And the other thing about the state pension, I've always said, is actually it's not just about pensioners now, it's about people in the future. That young people who can't get onto the property ladder, who can't get a mortgage, who are in insecure employment, need to know that there is a, a, a state pension for them in the future that will support them. Bills are increasing dramatically now. It has taken 35 years for the underpayment of some state pensions to be identified, but pensioners in the poverty line cannot wait that long. The Government must now act to address this crisis.